Welcome to Cooking the Books. I'm here today with Catherine Burrell. It's me. Who has come to us all the way from Canada. our neighbor to the north. <laughs> Snowy, I, yeah, I like to think of America as Canada's pants. Canada's pants. That's how we think of ourselves. Good. Except we so never happy. think about Canada at all except during the Olympics, basically. Sorry. Um, <laughs> so Catherine is the author of Corked, which is a memoir. Um, and this is a really funny book. Catherine. Thanks. Well, you see, you it's know, sad. it's called Corked, and there's a It's cork. a, ruined, a yeah. ruined wine bottle. So I'm thinking that this is a book about wine. Yes. <laughs> you, you totally got it. It's, I, like, it's like you've read it or something. I might um, be a little disappointed if I thought that I was going to learn, like, what to order in a fancy French restaurant. I think back. that that's what I was going to write originally, and then it just turned out to be um, a, like a, a longish rant about the difficult relationship that I have with my father. Yes. That ended up being cleansing at the end as a result of writing the book. but uh, Not of the yeah. liver, but cleansing no, of, the, yeah, of, of the, the emotions. So, of the psyche. Yeah. So your dad is this amazing character in this book, and also, I guess, in, in real, real life. life. As it is a memoir. Um, <laughs> but you guys went on a huge crazy road trip, not in your native Canada, no. but in France, mm -hmm. his native His native France, France. yeah, he's Parisian. Mm -hmm. I had this really terrible car accident when I was 21 years old, and, uh, and I killed a man. And she killed a man. I killed a man, yeah. First murderer on cooking the books. Throwing that <laughs> out there. Wait, let's just clarify about the accident that it was so completely not your fault no. at all. <laughs> it was, it, an old man was jaywalking across a highway, and, and so I, I smashed into him. It's the kind of thing that could happen to anyone who drives a car. It's true, yeah. An old man. Why are they walking across highways like that? But anyway, so, so I had this really kind of like desperate moment of, of recalibration when it came to um, life and, and how long it is. And, Killed the man. My father had this ridiculous accident two years later where he fell into a hole, snapped the tendons in his knee. Right. He was getting some bottles for a family tasting we were doing. So I went down into the cellar and I had this crazy Proustian moment where I was like, oh, there's like a jillion bottles of wine in the cellar. There's no way he's going to be able to drink his way through the cellar. This will be my wine at some point. And when he started walking again properly, I proposed this wine trip because I was like, if I can kind of like dig my hands into the soil of France, I'm sure I'll understand the wine and understand him. Okay, so um, explain to us quickly what we're going to make today because it's something from the book, very right. specific. We're going to, my father was one of those people who is never very good at expressing. He expresses like affection in a very bizarre kind of way. When I did something right, I never really knew if I was doing something right, but I had this really great moment where I learned how to make hollandaise. One of my very good friends is a chef and she taught me how to make sort of textbook hollandaise. He was also a chef when he was uh, like working in France. So we were making steamed asparagus one day and I was like, would you like me to make a hollandaise sauce? And so he was like, no one, you've got to work for ages to make sauces. And then I whipped up this batch of textbook book Hollandaise and he was like I cannot believe you he was so he was so deferential and impressed with my my Hollandaise making skills so, so what's the first step in making textbook Hollandaise that will impress even a French sociate? even a French sociate we're gonna uh, separate four eggs so the way that I like to separate eggs is just kind of I hold it and then you just kind of tap it along the sides so you make a clean cut mm, like this. it's already getting pretty fancy textbook up in here <laughs> So, yeah, so you just kind of pull apart the... Pressure's on, man. I know, seriously, I'm going to mess <laughs> everything up Separate an egg now. on camera. Oh, jeez. Look, yeah. look at this. I've never mastered doing that. Really? The, Do you yeah. want to try one? Um, yeah, sure. sure. I'm going to totally fuck it up. No, you're not. It'll be um, fine. <laughs> Magical thinking. I'm taking a class soon in knife skills. Really? DT Doves, yeah, at, the, uh, at Brooklyn Kitchen. Shout out to Brooklyn Kitchen. <laughs> no um, I like the idea that it's just the, like one kitchen in Brooklyn. You just did that so perfectly. I, I faked it a little. I sort of like started it. It was and the, then I, the stunt egg? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay, so here are four eggs. So we're just using the yolks. Of just our using four the eggs. yolks, that's right. And then the second step, Hollandaise. Yeah, it's funny that everyone freaks out about Hollandaise because it's really a very simple thing. You want, oh, what I usually do actually is I stick the stick of butter in my back pocket. Like, like the one the mic's not in. Yeah, when they have the other one. Yeah, so you got a microphone pocket is your right pocket and your butter pocket is this one. Cool. And if I was, like, if this is a real time cooking show, which would be so boring. <laughs> 
I would walk around your apartment. Cooking documentary. <laughs> yeah, that's right. And this is the part where it's just a very extreme close-up on my ass as I'm walking around with the butter. Uh, yeah, I think just, that could be arranged. <laughs> It's, um, uh, yeah. But it warms it up a bit, so you kind of want the butter at like not total room temperature, but basically room temperature. Okay, okay. And you want a stick for your four egg yolks. And here's the thing: like the the whole thing with hollandaise is that um, you need to get all the temperatures right because you don't want to make scrambled eggs in the pot. So the key is cutting the butter up into little cubes, little cubes, little adorable cubes. Word. So let's adjourn to the stove. Yes. And you're going to show us how to put it all together. Put it all together to make it work. Okay. So we've got a double boiler going right now. So we've, you've got you kind of want a couple of inches of simmering water in the pot, and then you want to put a pot over top because if you were to cook it in the actual pot over the heat, it would just make scrambled eggs immediately. So um, what you want to do is you want to take your four whipped egg yolks and stick them in. Basically, you just like as they're starting to heat up, you want to immediately start to introduce your little butter cubes. You just kind of want to just keep stirring and stirring. And you just got to, you got to be really kind of mindful of um, what the, what the eggs are doing. So those, that butter is melted immediately. We'll add some more butter cubes. Hello eggs. Hey butter. Hey, what's going on? It's a mixer. <laughs> <laughs> it's a dating party. You never thought that they could get along, but they totally do. I'm holding it above above the water because I just I become really terrified of making scrambled eggs. And then I don't know. Whenever I've messed up hollandaise, I feel like a real. I, I don't know if it's because my father was so laudatory when I made the perfect hollandaise. I feel like when I mess it up, I'm like insulting my father's honor. And I think this is going to be one of those hollandaise is that I don't mess up, which is really great news. Don't jinx it. God, I'm totally gonna mess it up now. <laughs> what happens, what's the part with the lemon juice? Oh, we just, now we just add it. Oh. So basically, you've got your hollandaise. It looks delicious. Doesn't it look great? Yeah. God, I'm so proud. And then we just sort of season it with And our... you season it with like a, about a tablespoon of lemon juice. Mm-hmm. Because if not, you're really just eating like fat. Mm. So you just want this to kind of tart it all up. Mm-hmm, like, mm-hmm. And then, um, yeah, and then you just want to season it with salt and pepper. And I use white pepper. I'm a purist in nothing in my life except for hollandaise sauce. So I like to keep it all kind of like uniformly colored. And a little bit of salt. So it's done. Hmm. Did we achieve enough? I, I like it. Okay, good. So we're gonna now pour the hollandaise over the asparagus. And it could be a little bit thicker, but I promise it will taste decent. This looks good to me. I'm not even going to use a fork. Yeah, I, I think we should use our hands, yeah, probably. Yeah, just go for it. There's something very right. sort of sexual about this. I mean, right? <laughs> Am I crazy? Mmm. It's really good. Mm. That worked out. Yeah, you're good at making pond dude. Thanks, Happen. man. And at writing. And at writing a book. <laughs> nice work with that. Thank you. Um, no, thank you for being for this. the books. Okay. Bye. Bye. I am giving you